Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Eka Baru Shem Kevo Ma Leolam Baeth. Hear, O Israel, the Lord I, Yah, the Lord is one. Blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever. All praises to the Most High, Yah. If I
on the fourth day. We get up this morning seeking him first. The kingdom of the most high Yah. And all his righteousness, knowing that all things should be added unto us. Therefore, we come seeking, knocking, and asking on the hills of Hanukkah. As we begin to set our minds on the Most High Yah, seeking him first, his kingdom, and all his righteousness, knowing that all things should be added unto us. Because the Most High Yah said, let there be light. And there was light. Come on now. It's coming up to Hanukkah, December the 11th through December 18th. And right now, the Most High Yah is telling you, you are the light of the world. And you're going to have to be like Judah Maccabee. You're going to have to stand, 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 and stand some more. Take a stand on the Most High Yah's righteousness. Be in right standing with the Most High. Be in an alignment with him, knowing that the Bible is about a king and a kingdom. So we already know that order, and we know order is the uh, accurate arrangement of all things. He's setting up order in our lives. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what you feel like. The Most High Yah is setting up order in our lives. And that comes through his constitution. Now we read his constitution every single day. And we know what the constitution says. So we have to be obedient to the constitution of the kingdom. See, we're in a modern day Babylon and we don't care what this world is doing because we are in this world, but not of this world. But we will be obedient to the Most High Yah. Israel said, all that Yah has said, we shall do. So obedience is better than sacrifice. And we're being obedient to what he told us about three, four days ago, self-control. We're operating in the spirit of self-control. Because it's not about you, it's about the Most High Yah. And when we begin to separate ourselves from things that we know it's not about us, it's about the Most High Yah. When we start leaning to our own understanding, instead of in all our ways acknowledge the Most High Yah, we'll get caught up and be somewhere else and the Most High Yah be looking for you like he was looking for Adam. Adam, where are you? Because of disobedience. We try to hide. From the Most High Yah. You know, our disobedience separates us from the Most High Yah. So we want to be obedient because obedience brings the blessing. He would bless us. He will multiply us. He will renew us, refresh us, give us a Holy Ghost revival when we begin to walk in the constitution of the Most High Yah. So I come to teach about the kingdom this morning because it's about the kingdom. Thou kingdom come. Thou will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I come to give you an unshakable kingdom. Actually, I give you the keys of the kingdom. Come on now. The Most High Yah is setting up his kingdom on earth if you have not realized it yet. And he's cleaning up some things. He's clearing out some things. He's removing some things. And so the Most High Yah is like, come on now. I need you to truly begin to walk in my principles. As we were walking in the principles of yesterday, knowing that we have keys of the principle. When we begin to understand the kingdom concepts, that is precepts, his statutes, his ordinance, all of that is his constitution. And we must line up with the word of the Most High Yah, line upon line, precept upon precept, and then we'll begin to walk in his will. Not our will, because like Yahushua said, nevertheless... Not my will, but thy will be done. Don't you understand when he said, if at all possible? Because see, sometimes all of you, you know, you're in that place of if at all possible. If at all possible, let this cup pass for me. And his response had to be, because most high y'all was like, no, I know the plans that I have for you. And this was before the foundation of the world, that this would happen. So therefore, Yahushua's response was, nevertheless, not my will, 
but that will be done. The word also says when you find yourself on divers trials and tribulations to count it all joy. And, and um, we don't walk in that. We walk in, you know what we feel and how we feel. We don't count it all joy. We know that the Most High Yah is in control of our lives unless we're trying to control it ourselves. He is in control of our lives. He knew you before he formed you in your mother's womb. He knows every hair that is numbered on your head. So thank the Most High Yah for the things that he is doing in your life. I'm talking about all things work together for them who love the Most High Yah and that are called according to his purpose. Paul said many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Most High Yah shall deliver us from it all. It was good for me that I was afflicted. Come on now, that's what the word says. It was good for me that I was afflicted. So as we're leading up to Hanukkah, and we know it's about the oil, the Most High will press on you, press on you, press on you, press on you until he gets that little one drop of oil. And that one drop of oil is your obedience. That's what it is. It's your obedience to the Most High Yah. I can sit here day after day after day and say the same thing. When we look at our lives, and our lives are the way that it is, somewhere we missed an instruction from the Most High Yah. So we have to go back and find that instruction and begin to walk it out because we know the steps of a righteous man is ordered by the Most High Yah. So just say, order my steps in your word. Order my steps in your word. Come on in here, Queen Gina. I've been praying for you and standing with you and your family and praying against, uh, you know, the attack of COVID. COVID is just, you know, it's, it's coming real close to home. You know, it was my son last week, and, and this week is, you know, your baby, your grandbaby. And I, I'm just praying for him, uh, Royce. And so we're going to stand on, be still, and know that I am the Most High Yah. Be still and know that I am the Most High Yah. So I'm going to need the prayer warriors to get on the wall now for Queen Gina and start praying for her family and, and her grandbaby, Royce. Just start praying without ceasing. The word says men ought to always pray and not faint. The word says be anxious for nothing, but in all things, in prayer and supplication, making our petition known before the Most High Yah. The word says one can chase a thousand, but two can put 10,000 to flight. So therefore, we already know we're sending Raphael into this situation. The fever will break. The baby will be just fine. And we already know. We already walked through it. The Most High Yah don't have no respect of a person. So we already know that healing is taking place as we're speaking right now. Now, thank you that we are in a kingdom and all we have to do is say kingdom and everything is lining up because we have kingdom principles for kingdom living. So we got you, Queen Gina, lifting you up and praying for you like never before. Woo, Most High. I come lifting up everyone on Facebook Live this morning. The ones that are listening live and the ones that will listen later. Most high, yeah, I know right now that my sister received a report on yesterday about her grandson, Royce. We lift him up by his name. You know every hair that's numbered on his little head. You know the smile that he has. You know how he talks, he walks. You already know. And right now, healing is taking place in his body. We stand in agreement. We stand on your word from Genesis to Revelation. We know healing is the children's bread. And by your stripes, he is healed. So we're walking in complete healing. There will be no, no, no uh, signs of COVID ever being in his little body. I thank you right now that you are working it out. And it is in his favor. We will just be still and know that you are the most high God. Thank you for your word that's coming forth this morning. Thank you right now that you are bringing us out of darkness into your marvelous light during the time of Hanukkah. We got just enough oil, Gina. We have just enough oil. We're going to pray without ceasing and stand on his word. And we will forever give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. And it's in the mighty, mighty name of Yahushua, I pray. All praises to the most high Yah. 
The word says, if two or three gather together in his name, that he would be in the midst. The word says, if two touch and agree on anything, it shall be done. And I know I can't do nothing this morning without this word being established through the law, the prophets, and the writings. Come on in here, Queen Adrian. The method style of study, it is a process of studying the word of Ahia, Asha, Ahia, which is I am, that I am in Hebrew, the great I am, the Yah of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we seek his guidance and live in a kingdom lifestyle. The Torah is the Most High Yah's teachings and instructions and 613 principles is where the Creator speaks, Mother. And then we search the witnesses through the books of the prophets, the Nevi'ins, and the books of the writings, the Ketavins, collectively the Torah, the Nevi'ins, and the Ketavins, or identify as the Tanakh, which is the Old Testament's proper title. And it's the only book that Yahushua studied in reference throughout the New Testament. Jeremiah chapter 49, verse 14. I have heard a rumor from the Most High, and an ambassador is sent unto the heathen, saying, Gather ye together and come against her, and rise up to the battle. Today we look to the word ambassador. Hebrews number 6735, Torah. Ambassador, hinge, messenger, pain, pang, and sorrow. The Torah testifies. The prophets proclaim. Obadiah chapter 1 verse 1. The vision of Obadiah thus says the Most High Yah concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from the Most High and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye and let us rise up against her in battle. The writings bear witness. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 17. A wicked messenger falleth into mischief, but a faithful ambassador is health. We have completed the method style of study this morning, reviewing ambassador. First, we recognize the standard set in the Torah and 613 principles. Then we search the witnesses in the books of the prophets, the Nevi'ins, and the books of the writings, the Ketavins, collectively the Torah, the Nevi'ins, and the Ketavins, or identify as the Tanakh, which is the Old Testament's proper title, and it's the only book that Yahuwah studied in reference throughout the New Testament. 5 a.m. prayer. It is time that we understand that we are ambassadors of the Most High Yah's kingdom. As Hamashiach's ambassadors, we represent the kingdom government of the Most High Yah. We are diplomats of his kingdom in this world. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 20. For which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Come on, Queen Gina. Shalom, Allah King. Peace be unto you, 5 a.m. prayer community. As ambassadors of Hamashiach, we represent our home government, the kingdom of the Most High Yah. When people come into contact with us, they should meet not just a person, but the Most High Yah whom we belong to and who dwells inside of us through his Ruach HaKadosh. We must walk according to the commandments and laws of our king if we truly consider ourselves to be kingdom citizens and ambassadors for the invisible kingdom of Yah. So now, are you ready for the word of Yah, the father of Abraham, the father of Isaac, the father of Jacob. Are you ready for the word of Yah? The father of Abraham, the father of Isaac, the father of Jacob. This morning we are coming out of the book of Exodus. 
Exodus chapter 20, come on with the Constitution, chapter 20 in its entirety. Okay, this morning, we are coming out of the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 20 in its entirety, and it reads, And Yah spake all these words, saying, I am the Most High Thou, Yah, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow thyself down to them nor serve them for I am the most high thou Yah am a jealous Yah visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Most High Thou Yah in vain, for the Most High Yah will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou work, labor, and do all thou work. For the seventh day is the Sabbath unto the Most High Thou Yah. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thou son, nor thou daughter, thou manservant, nor thou maidservant, nor thou cattle, nor thou stranger that is within thou gates. For in six days the Most High Yah made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and he rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Most High blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Order thou father and thou mother that thou days may be long upon the land which the most high thou Yah giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. And all the people saw the thundering and the lightning and the noise of the shofar and the mountain smoking. And when they saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let not Yah speak with us, lest we die. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for Yah is come to prove you, and that his fear may be before your faces, that ye sin not. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where Yah was. And the Most High Yah said unto Moses, Thus thou shalt say, Unto the children of Israel, ye have heard that I have talked with you from heaven. Ye shall not make unto me gods of silver, neither shall ye make unto you gods of gold. An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me, and in and shall sacrifice thereon thou burnt offering, and thou peace offering, thou sheep, and thou oxen. And all the places where I record my name, I will come unto thee, and I will bless thee. And if thou wilt make me an altar of stone, thou shalt not build it of hewed stone. For if thou lift up thy tools upon it, thou hast polluted it. Neither shalt thou go up by steps unto my altar, that thou nakedness be not discovered thereon. May the Most High Yah add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his most holy word. All right, now we're continuing with the kingdom principles. Principle number 10, the kingdom common wealth principle. Come on in here this morning. Number 10, the kingdom common wealth principle. All kingdoms function on the principle of a common wealth. The word common wealth exists only in kingdoms. Say that again, Dr. J. The word common wealth exists only in kingdoms. Common wealth is the king's commitment to see that all of his citizens have equal access to the wealth and resources of the kingdom. This is important to the king because the quality of life of the citizens of a kingdom reflects the glory and reputation of the king. When the welfare of the king's citizens is excellent, then the king's reputation among other kings is honorable. 
Kingdoms provide for all the needs of their citizens, and the king is personally committed to and involved in the welfare of his citizens. Because of the commonwealth principle, the citizenry in a kingdom begins to reflect their king's qualities, including his wealth. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Matthew chapter 6, verse 31 through 33. For the Most High, the Most High Yah is a sun and shield. The Most High bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk is blameless. Come on, Most High Yah. Psalms chapter 84, verse 11. So you can say to yourself this morning, during a pandemic, he shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory because I am in a kingdom and there's a thing called common wealth and that's kingdom language. Number 11, the kingdom culture principle. What you say? The kingdom culture principle. This is the lifestyle in the way of life for the citizens manifested in their language. Come on, Hebrew folks. Dress, eating habits, values, morals, and sense of self-worth and self-concept. Say that again. The kingdom culture principle. This is the lifestyle and way of life for the citizens manifested in their what? Language, dress, eating habits, values, morals, and sense of self-worth and self-concept. Culture encompasses many things. Culture is the act of developing the intellect and moral faculties by education expert care and training. Culture is the enlightenment and excellence of taste acquired by the intellect and the artistic training. Simply stated, we all come to think like the environment we grow up in. Our intellect interaction with our environment literally produces a way of thinking in us that becomes our way of life. And so we become trained in our culture. None of us are born with a culture. We are born into a culture, but we are not born with a culture. In other words, Culture is the development of people's intellectual capacities and moral awareness through a combination of formal instruction and informal modeling. Once you understand the culture of a people, you understand the people. Come on, Hebrew folks. Once you understand the culture of a people, you understand the people. Everything that makes a nation a nation and a people a people is wrapped up in their culture. And that's something that was taken away from us. We don't know our culture. We don't know who we are. So Hebraically now we're walking in our queenship and kingship and we're beginning to understand we have a culture. We have a culture. Everything that makes a nation a nation and a people a people is wrapped up in their culture. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctified myself, 
that they too may be truly sanctified. John chapter 17, verse 15 through 19. Now you're reading the word with the understanding of the culture of the Most High Yah and the kingdom that he's presenting to you. Now you can understand Yahushua's prayer. He said, my prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you send me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctified myself, that they too may truly, that they may, that they too may be truly sanctified. Sanctified, remember we learn, means set apart, reserved. Ooh, for the most high Yah's purpose. John chapter 17, verse 15 through 19. Number 12, the kingdom economy principle. Come on, most high. We in this world, but we're not of this world. It doesn't matter about this pandemic. I'm trying to tell you the kingdom economy principle. All kingdoms operate on a system that secures and sustains the strength and viability of the kingdom. The system involves the kingdom's government providing opportunity for the citizens to participate in the benefit program of the kingdom prosperity through contributing to the work ethic and culture of the kingdom. The kingdom economy usually involves a taxation system, investment opportunity, and creative development programs for the citizens. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be, it will be measured to you. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. When Yahushua heard this, he said to him, you still lack one thing. Sell everything you have and give it to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. Luke chapter 18, verse 22. Principle number 13, according to the kingdom principle. The kingdom taxation principle. All kingdoms incorporate a taxation system which allows its citizens to participate in the process of maintaining the kingdom infrastructure. The system allows the citizens to share in the kingdom's commonwealth and return a set portion to the king resources back to the king. In essence, everything in the kingdom already belongs to the king, including the taxes required from the citizens. Therefore, taxation is simply the government allowing its resources to pass through the hands of the citizens. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Matthew chapter 22 Verse 17, then he said to them, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to the most high Yah, what is the most high Yah's? Matthew chapter 22, verse 21. Mm. Let's see, we won't skip that little part. Principle number 14, the kingdom army principle. All kingdoms incorporate an army of security components to protect and defend their territory and citizens. What you say? You ain't got to fight in this battle. Stand still. Set yourself and see the salvation of the Most High Yah. The kingdom army. Army principle. All 
all kingdoms incorporate an army of security components to protect and defend their territory and citizens. The army is the kingdom's system of securing its territory and protecting its citizens. It is important to understand that in a kingdom, the citizens do not fight in the army. Say that again, Dr. J. It is important to realize that the citizens do not fight in the army, but enjoy the protection of the army. Come on, Michael, and war for us. This is why in the kingdom of the Most High Yah, the messengers are called the host of heaven. Here we are trying to fight battles. I bind you, I bind you, demon, I bind you. You don't have to fight. The kingdom has an army. And it's important that in a kingdom, the citizens do not fight in the army, but enjoy the protection of the army. That's why in the kingdom of the Most High Yah, the messengers are called the host of heaven. This word host means army. And identifies the messengers as the so-called military component of the kingdom of heaven. This kingdom concept presents a challenge to our religious thinking of the church as an army. A careful study of the biblical constitution of the word will show that the church, as Yahushua established it, is not identified as an army but rather a citizenship, a family of sons in a nation. He unleashed against them his hot, angry, his wrath, indignation, and hostility, a band of destroying angels, messengers. Psalms chapter 78 verse 49 through 50. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways that will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Songs 91 verses 11 and 12. Praise the most high, you his angels, you mighty ones, who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the most high, all his heavenly hosts, you his servants who do his will. Psalms chapter 103, verse 20 and 21. So it will be at the end of age, the son of man will send out his angels and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and do who? And all who do evil, they will throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Matthew chapter 13, verse 40 through 42. Principle of the kingdom number 15. The kingdom delegated authority principle. What you say? The kingdom delegated authority principle. All kingdoms establish a representative system that delegates responsibility to appointed citizens to serve as envoys or ambassadors of the kingdom or state. Ambassadors pers personify and embody the king's authority and the kingdom or state. Ambassadors are the property and responsibility of the state and thus do not concern themselves with their own personal needs. Their primary purpose is to represent the interests of the kingdom. One of the things that the Ruach HaKadosh teaches us is how to stand in authority. As true sons and daughters of the Most High Yah, no matter what troubles or difficulties Come into our lives. As royal children of our heavenly fathers, we can take charge of our circumstances rather than being a slave to them. We can live daily in power and victory rather than in weakness and defeat. All it takes is training. And the Ruach HaKadosh is 
our teaching. As you send me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctified myself that they too may be truly sanctified. John chapter 17, verse 18 and 19. Again, Yeshua said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit. John chapter 20, verse 21 and 22. Principle number 16. The kingdom ambassador principle. An ambassador speaks for the kingdom and does not represent himself or herself, only his kingdom. The ambassador is the king's agency for conveying its will, desires, and purposes in the territory to which he or she is assigned. Adam the first royal representative of heaven's kingdom on earth was delegated the responsibility of serving as heaven's earthly ambassador. And an ambassadorial representative is only as viable and legal as his relationship with his government. Adam became an ambassador without a portfolio. An envoy without official status, a citizen without a country, a king without a kingdom, a ruler without a domain. And he has committed to us the messenger of reconciliation. We are therefore Hamashiach ambassadors as though the Most High Yah were making his appeal through us. Second Corinthians Chapter 5, verse 19 and 20. Principle number 17. The kingdom education principle. Say it again. The kingdom education principle. All kingdoms establish a system and program for training and educating their citizens. The education system is designed to transfer, reinforce, and encumulate the laws values, morals, and manners of the king and the kingdom to succeeding generations and new citizens. As this I have spoke while still with you, but the counselor, the Ruach HaKadosh, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. John chapter 14, verses 25 and 26. If you love me, you will obey what I command. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. The spirit of truth. John chapter 14, verse 15 through 17. Kingdom principle number 18. The kingdom administration principle. All kingdoms establish a system through which they administer their judgments and programs to the citizens. The administrative program is also designed to protect the rights and privileges of the citizens and their access to the king's favor. In the same way, let your light shine before men. Come on, Hanukkah. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Number 19. The kingdom principle of glory. Say it again, Dr. J. The kingdom principle of glory. The glory of the king is all and everything in the kingdom that represents and manifests the true nature of the king himself. The glory literally means true essence of full weight. Say it again, Dr. J. The glory literally means true essence or true or full weight. Who among the Most High Yah is like you, 
Oh, yeah. Who is like you? Majestic in holiness. Awesome in glory. Work in wonders. You stretch out your right hand. Exodus chapter 15, verse 11 and 12. The heavens declare the glory of the Most High Yah. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Psalms chapter 19, verse 1. This is my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciples. Tamadines. John chapter 15, verse 8. Chapter Kingdom Principles of Worship. Say it again. Number 20. The Kingdom Principle of Worship. The worship of a king is the expression of the citizen's gratitude and appreciation to the king for his favor, privileges, and security of being in his kingdom. Worship is also an indication of the perceived worth that the king is to the citizen. Worship also involves the offering of gifts to the king, indicating the citizen's awareness that all things that he enjoys are at the pleasure of the king and the acknowledgement that it belongs to the king. Worship also expresses our dependency on the king, which, at, which activates the king's obligation to care for his citizens who proclaim his name as their king. Worship! the Most High, your Most High Yah. And his blessings will be on your food and water. I will take away sickness from among you and none will miscarry or be barren in your land. I will give, I will give you a full lifespan. I bet you never read that in scripture. You know, we was always taught worship, praise your way out of it, praise your way through it. But here goes scripture right here to back up worship. Exodus chapter 23, verse 25 through 26. Bring it back down, please. Worship the most high. You're the most high, Yah, And his blessings will be on your food and water. I will take away sickness from among you and none will miscarry or be barren in your land i will give you a full life span exodus chapter 23 verse 25 and 26 do not worship any other the most high yah for the most high whose name is jealous is a jealous most high yah do not worship any other god we're talking about them 365 gods. Do not worship any other God. For the Most High, whose name is Jealous, is a Jealous, the Most High, Yah. Exodus chapter 34, verse 14. Yahushua was said to him, Away from me, High Satan, for it is written, Worship the Most High, your Most High, Yah, and serve him only. Matthew chapter 4. Verse 10, the kingdom principle of provision, number 21. In all true kingdoms, the king is obligated to provide for his citizens, and thus he makes provision at his own expense for their security and welfare. Say it again. The kingdom principle of provision. If we would just get down the kingdom principles for our lives and what the most high Yah as king is obligated, his reputation is on the line that he provides for us, we would not be out here begging. Because scripture says, I was young and now I am old. Yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken. Or their children begging bread. They are always generous and led freely. Their children will be blessed. Psalms chapter 37 verse 25 and 26. So do not worry saying what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear. 
Matthew chapter 6, verse 31. The kingdom principle of influence, number 22. The kingdom principle of influence. All kingdoms are committed to make the influence of the king and his will felt throughout the entire kingdom. He told them, still, another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into a large amount of flour until it worked all through the flour, all through the dough. Matthew chapter 13, verse 33. Therefore, go and make Tamadines, disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20. The kingdom principle of royal favor. Number 23. Oh my goodness. If we would just change our way of thinking. When Yahushua stood oh, before the Talmudians, when he came out for his earthly ministry, after coming up out of the water, he said, repent. Change your way of thinking. For the kingdom of the Most High Yah is here. The kingdom principle of royal favor. Royal favor. Now, I know we be saying, oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. But this says the kingdom principle of royal favor. Royal favor is the sovereign prerogative of the king to extend a personal law to a citizen that positions that citizen to receive special privileges and advantages that are personally protected by the king. And the most I said, I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you. And I will proclaim my name. The most high in your presence, I will have mercy on whom I have will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Exodus chapter 33, verse 19. The kingdom principle of decree. Come on now. We talked about decreeing a thing, not naming it and claiming it when we was doing we was in religion, but we're talking about decree. Number 24. The kingdom principle of decree. A royal decree is a declaration of a king that becomes law to all. Say it again. A royal decree is a declaration of a king that becomes law to all. It is sustained by the king's personal commitment to bring the declaration or promise to pass. Remember, O king, that according to the law of the Midians and the Persians, no decree or edict that the king issue can be changed. What you say? So if I told you, I shall supply all your needs according to my riches and glory, I done declared and make a, made a declaration. And guess what? It cannot be changed. If I told you, you shall not go empty, then therefore the Most High Yah is not a man that he should lie, neither the Son of Man that he needs to repent. You just need to walk in the principles of the kingdom. I tell you the truth. Until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Matthew chapter 5 verse 18. Number 25, the kingdom principle of reputation. What you say? Oh, it ain't about your faith. It's about the most high Yah's faithfulness. Oh, I'm loving this this morning. Because the most high Yah is telling you right now, 
in a pandemic. If you would get kingdom principles for kingdom living, things would change in your life. Because he shall supply all your needs according to his what? Glorious riches. Let's not leave that out because we've been leaving that out. According to his glorious riches. The kingdom principle of reputation. The king's reputation is important to the king. And is the source of the glory of his name. A king's reputation is created and sustained by the conditions of his citizens and his kingdom. Therefore, kings act in ways that are favorable to their namesake. Read that again, Dr. J. The kingdom principle of reputation. The king's reputation is important to the king and is the source of the glory of his name. A king's reputation is created and sustained by the conditions of his citizens and his kingdom. Therefore, kings act in ways that are favorable to their namesake. For the sake of his great name, the Most High will not reject his people, because the Most High was pleased to make you his own. His reputation is on the line now. In a pandemic, pandemic, some of y'all are screaming out, I'm worried about tomorrow. Do I have enough? Most High, can you fix this? Can you do this for you? Can you give me this? Can you fix this situation? Can I come out of this? Can you do something about it? Do you see me, Most High? And the Most High, y'all are saying, my reputation... It's on the line. I take care of my citizens for my name's sake. For the sake of his great name. The Most High Yah will not reject his people because the Most High was pleased to make you his own. 1 Samuel chapter 12 verse 22 for the sake of your word. And according to your will, you have done this great thing and made it known to your servant. 2 Samuel chapter 7 verse 21. The kingdom principle of giving to a king. Principle number 26. The kingdom principle of giving to a king. Giving to a king Activates the king's obligation to demonstrate his glory and power to the giver and to prove that he is the greater king than all other kings. Giving to a king in his kingdom is the acknowledgement that all things belong to that king and the citizens is grateful. Because giving to a king is impossible since all things already belong to the king. The act of giving benefits the citizens more than the king. Thus one should never come before a king empty handed. What you say? Thus one should never come before a king empty handed. And she gave the king. 120 talents of gold, large quantities of spices and precious stones. Never again were so many spices brought in as those that Queen Sheba gave to King Solomon. First Kings chapter 10, verse 10. I'm going to say that again. And she gave the king. 120 talents of gold, large quantities of spices and precious stones. Never again were there so many spices brought in as those that Queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. First Kings chapter 10 verse 10. King Solomon was greater in riches and wisdom than all the other kings of the earth. The whole world sought audience with Solomon to hear the wisdom. 
the Most High Yah had put in his heart. Year after year, everyone who came bought a gift. Articles of silver and gold. Robes, weapons, and spices, and horses, and mules. First Kings chapter 10, verse 23 through 25. From this overview of kingdoms, one can see that kingdom, that a kingdom is a more advantage than a republic. Therefore, it is more beneficial to be in a kingdom than in a democracy or any form of government. I therefore challenge you to embrace and accept the invitation of the king, Yahushua Wahamashiach, to come and renew your citizenship in the kingdom of heaven by being born into the kingdom of the Most High Yah through the reception of of the Ruah HaKadosh of the king by accepting the provision of the redemptive work of the king himself. This is your opportunity not to join a religion or become a slave of rituals or traditions that have no political me practical meaning, but rather to migrate from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light and renew your heavenly immigration status on earth. I'm going to say that again. I'm going to say that again. Now from this whole overview of a kingdom understanding, I therefore mm -mm, I therefore challenge you to embrace and accept the invitation of the king, Yahushua HaMashiach, to come and renew your citizenship in the kingdom of heaven by being born into the kingdom of the Most High Yah through the reception of the Ruach HaKadosh of the king. By accepting the provisions of the redemptive work of the king himself. This is your opportunity not to join a religion or become a slave of rituals or traditions that have no practical meaning, but rather to migrate from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light and renew your heavenly immigration status on earth. All praises to the Most High Yah. All praises to the Most High Yah. Hallelujah and bless your name. It's time to come out of darkness into his marvelous light as we get ready to celebrate Hanukkah, December the 11th through December the 18th. The Most High Yah is giving you an unshakable kingdom. Thou kingdom come, thou will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The king has set up provisions for you. The king has set up security to protect you. The king reputation is on the line in a pandemic. And I tell you right now, he shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. There is no good thing that will be withheld from you. It's the king's desire to give you a kingdom so you will be able to stand on his word from Genesis to Revelation. The king does not lie. He decrees a thing. His word becomes law. He's sovereign in the earth realm. You better know that you know that you know that it's about a king in a kingdom. Bless your name, Most High Yah. I'm giving you all the glory, all the praise, all the honor, because in the kingdom, you must worship. There will come a day where the spirit of the Most High Yah is looking for the true worshipers. And they that worship him shall worship him in spirit and in truth. 
And when you begin to worship the king, the king begins to bless you like never before. When you begin to worship the king, the king begins to give to you like never before. Going through all of these kingdom principles, you should have a mind change right now. You should change the way you think. You should change the way you talk. You should change the way you walk. Now you should have a totally different mindset. He's just good like that. He's just good like that. You better start understanding the kingdom. Because our problem is we're not understanding the kingdom. And we're out here worrying. We're out here begging. We're out here doing things that we ought not to. And we are in a kingdom. We have not got an understanding of our citizenship. We have no understanding of our citizenship. Because what? We've been raised in a democracy. We're looking at the world. You better understand that you are in this world, but not of this world. He sanctified you. He set you apart. But you have to walk it out as kings and queens. You got to hold on to the word of the Most High Yah. Like never before. Tests, trials, tribulations, they going to come. But what are you doing? Hold on to his word. His word does not return void. You can't even reverse his word. And his word will do exactly what he sent it to do. Kingdom principles for kingdom living. Don't you wish Somebody would have taught this to you a long time ago as a child. Then maybe our mindsets wouldn't be the way that they are. And it's hard for us to come out of this mindset because we're so conditioned. You know, when we begin to walk in lack, we begin to panic. Instead of saying to the most high God, I know the plans that you have for me. I'm just going to walk by faith and not by sight. I don't care what I see. I don't care what I feel like. I'm going to trust you. I'm not going to lean to my own understanding. In all my ways, I'm acknowledging you because you are directing my path. You're the author and finisher of my faith. You're the all the time. You're the first and the last. You know the end from the beginning and the beginning from the end. You know the plans you have for me. We have to get to a point that you're really living in a kingdom. Instead of talking about it, be about it. Put it in action. Take these principles and apply them to your life. And stop being defeated by the enemy. It's time to take a stand, y'all. It is time to take a stand. Kingdom principles for kingdom living. And I mean it. You got to believe it. And you got to walk it. And you got to put it into action. You got to activate the king. It says when you begin to worship, it activates the king. Where's your worship at? Where's your worship? You got to walk in it, y'all. There's no sense in us getting up early in the morning, seeking the most high, y'all, and you're not going to make not one application. You're just going to let the world do whatever the world want to do with you. You're going to let your mind just go crazy and run rapid on you. There's no sense in you keep walking in these principles. Well, first of all, you're not walking in them. You're doing all that. There's no sense in us teaching this and teaching this and teaching this and teaching this. If you're not going to even try it. To most how y'all even says in this word, prove me. Prove me. You ain't even trying the most high. Prove me. And see if I won't open up the windows of heaven. And pour you out a blessing. 
that you don't have room to receive. Prove me. All right, Most High. And here are your next five principles under the eighth commandment. Thou shall not steal. Principle number 485. You shall not harden your heart or close your hand against your destitute brother. Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 7. Principle number 486. You shall open your hand and lend whatever is lacking. What you say? Principle number 486. You shall open your hand and lend whatever is lacking. Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 8. Principle number 487. You shall not move the boundary marker of your neighbor. Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 14. Principle number 488. You shall return the lost property of your brother. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 1. And principle number 489. You shall not hide yourself from any lost property of your brother. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 3. All praises to the Most High Yah. All now praises to the awesome. Most High Yah. All praises to the Most High Yah. Mm -mm. If I should ever leave and wanna go home, please don't close the door on me. Yes, y'all. If I should go astray, I know you're alive. Thank you.
All praises to the Most High Yah. All praises to the Most High Yah. Through all your getting, get an understanding. Through all your getting, get an understanding. If you are a citizen and you've been walking through these teachings, you know as a citizen, you have rights. And if you are not applying the principles, then who fault is that? You know, we need this from the Most High Yah. We need that from the Most High Yah. We need Yah to fix this and Yah to do that and Yah bring me out of this. But are you applying the principles as a kingdom citizen? Are you applying the principles? Are you just listening to a word, but you're not taking this word on? You're not walking the word out. You're not doing anything. There has to be an application, y'all. He gave us a kingdom. We are citizens. We are kings and queens, sons and daughters of the Most High Yah. He made us a lender, not a borrower. We don't beg for nothing. We above, not beneath. And sometimes we let our circumstances rule us instead of us ruling our circumstances. Because we truly don't have an understanding of this kingdom thing. I dare you to take a principle and apply it to whatever is going on in your life, whatever the circumstances is. He's a king. You're not speaking your word. You're speaking his word. He made a decree on his word, which made it a law, and it cannot be changed. Come on now. You're speaking your words and not his words. Only speak the king's word. And your circumstances will change. Through all you're getting, get an understanding. Through all you're getting, get an understanding. Bless you, Queen Doreen. I'm standing and praying with you, applying the principles to your situation. Bless you, Queen Adrian. The Most High Yah is saying, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings of eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Bless you, Queen Gina, standing in the gap for complete healing on your grandbaby with COVID. Bless you. I can't even imagine a grandmother and your baby is sick. Queen Doreen, I have your family lifted, so praying over them, the ones that have been infected by COVID, praying for you. There's a cry going out this morning from the Ruach HaKadosh. And that cry is application. Application. Take the principles and apply them to your situation. And stay in. Having done all you can, just stand on the principles.
All right, Holy Spirit. I thank you. On the fourth day, many of us are in places and we're going through things in our life right now, but we trust in you. We put all our trust in you. We thank you for covering us. We thank you for providing for us. We thank you for making a way out of no way because you are the way, the truth, and the light. We thank you. And we will forever give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. And it's in the mighty, mighty name of Yahushua, I pray. Be still and know that I am Yah. Thank you, Most High. All praises to the Most High Yah. That word, that teaching this morning is ringing in my head, down in my soul. Because we have no understanding. We went on this kingdom journey and it was so exciting and knowing that it was about a king and a kingdom, the Bible and, you know, kingdom philosophy and last Sabbath, understanding kingdom keys. Man, he's really trying to get through to us. He's really trying to get through to us. But this morning... All the principles of the kingdom. He's a king. And his reputation is on the line. And if you out there looking bad and suffering all that. The king don't like that. They like who is your God? His reputation is on the line. But you have to apply the principles. to your life period you have to apply the principles to your life period stop thinking about it be about it that's it and that's what the most high is saying to you this morning you know, we ask the most high for things. And when we ask for it, if it's not turning out the way that we think it should turn out, we go seek something else. We go, you know, it's like, okay, if this is not working out, then maybe I should do something else. And the most high is like, you didn't finish the instruction that I gave you. You didn't finish the instruction that I gave you. And you know, we could be guilty of that sometimes because if we're not careful, our emotions will cause us to move. And when I say that, our emotions will cause us to move from the instruction that was given. Because it just don't seem like things are working out the way we want it to work out or it's not working out fast enough or it don't look like it's gonna work out. But if the most high y'all has given you an instruction. Follow, follow through with the instruction. Period. Follow through with the instruction. I'm guilty. I'm, I'm not saying I'm not. I'm guilty too. If I be like, oh shoot, it ain't working this way. Let me do something else. Let me Most times like, um, can you just stay with me? Did nobody tell you to move? Can you just stay right there? When it seems like things are not working out, that's when things are working out. Because the Most High is behind the scenes working it out. Imagine. Come on now. We're on the hills of Hanukkah. And Gina, you sent me this story on yesterday and it blessed my soul. Imagine Judah Maccabee 
coming into the house of the Most High Yah, and everything had been destroyed. I mean, they put pig's blood all over the altar. They just, uh, desecrated the Most High Yah's house. And they turned over all the oil, which means now the oil is mixed with something, so it's contaminated. So they was trying to find that oil that was not contaminated. So they found one jug of oil, one jug of oil. And that one jug was enough to only burn for one night. So I'm saying to you right now, whatever your situation is, you have just enough oil. You better go read the book of Maccabees. Because they stood up. And they fought in their situation. And they put everything in the Most High Yah's house back in order. Is everything in your life in order? Sometimes we got to check ourselves. You have just enough oil. And you believe that. December the 11th through December the 18th, Hanukkah. You have just enough oil. I know you're getting tired. I know you're getting tired. I'm getting tired too. I got life situations. I'm getting tired too. But guess what? I have just enough oil. And I'm standing on that. I'm standing on it. I'm going through this season right now with just enough oil. Bless you guys. Bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. Walk in the principles, apply them, and get an understanding. Woo! May the Most High Yah bless you and keep you. May the Most High Yah make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Most High Yah lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. So I shall put my name on the children of Israel and I will bless them. Bless you, Queen Doreen. Bless you and your family, girl. I already know. I'm standing with you. My heart is standing with you you i got you i got you queen adrian i got you queen gina queen regina queen evelyn uh king reynard king stefan apost timothy prophet wilkins and first lady Charnette, pastor davis oh my goodness queen robbie queen karen queen crystal it's so many queen katina I'm just standing in the gap for y'all. Just know I'm praying for you every single day. I lift you up. We all going through it. Like I said on yesterday, my son tested positive again for COVID. But thank the Most High Yah, he has no symptoms. So they say that happens sometimes, that the virus can stay in your body for even up to three weeks. So I'm just standing on healing. Healing is a children's bread. And by your stripes, he is healed. You know, as a mother, you're going to be concerned like, well, then what is it doing to his body? You know, because you hear of these, it's called long haulers that... They carry this in their body and it could do something to their organs. It could do things. You know, as a mother, those are my concerns. You know, like this is in his body. What is this still doing to his body? And the most high is like, I done gave you the word. What did I tell you? Be still and know that I am the most high. 
So I just got to be still. I just got to be still. And in all our situations, we got to walk in it. If it's a financial problem, if it's something that we need, we're going to have to say be still and know that he is Yah and take one of those principles and apply it to our situation. Find you a word and place that into your situation. I love you guys. So get to the blog spot, get to Facebook, get to YouTube. It will encourage you. Have a supernatural fourth day. I love you, love you, love you. Oh, I love you. You know I love you. Bye now. So good. So, so good.